I've seen a lot of people say that Go High Level changed their agency and took it to the next level. But what I haven't seen as much of is people actually sharing the automations that they use. And I wanted to share the one that I'm using right now to get more appointments to my clients. By no means, this is the perfect automation, but it's been working for me. So I thought I wanted to share it. Again, I run a Legion agency and I bring more appointments to my client. And yeah, it's been, it's something that's been working for me. So let me show you how I do it. In summary, what I'm doing for my client is running their Facebook ads and uh, getting them appointments. A potential lead would see the Facebook ad. They would read it, click on it. They would then fill and submit their form. Next, after they submit their form, a contact uh, gets created on go high level. And from here, I send them a text and an email. And the objective here is to take them down this process right here so that they are booked into my client's calendar. I'm going to show you exactly the sequence that I sent to the leads that we get through the ads, which is as soon as the lead submits their form, the contact is created in go high level and gets assigned to me. I get a or internal notification through the go high level app. I wait 10 minutes to send them a text as long as they're between the hours of nine to five, because I don't want to send them a text at midnight. Then I wait another minute, send the second text and I wait 10 hours for them to reply. If they do reply, I send a notification to my, like over text to myself so that I follow up with them and nurture them to try to book them. And if they don't reply, I create a task for myself, which is to call them. Okay. So basically what you're going to do in order to create your first sequence is to on go high level, go to automation and make sure you are in your client's account and not uh, on agency view. That's like a common mistake or something that I did when I was first starting out, I saw that I didn't have all of the options right here. And that's because I was on the agency view and not on the client. And you can change that simply by selecting your client right here. So you go to automation and then you hit create workflow and you start, you want to start one from scratch. This is like a series of steps that will happen automatically when a particular trigger happens. So I guess the first step would be for me to add the trigger. In this case, if you remember this diagram right here, the first step after the form is submitted is that the contact will be created in go high level and after the contact is created on go high level, I want to start, uh, this right here. And the way that I do that is by creating a trigger and the trigger will be a Facebook lead form submission. This is just the title that I gave it. So the filters I would do inform and then select the Facebook lead form that you've already created in your Facebook ads manager account. In this case, I'm just going to select this right here and then save. In the case that you're running different ads with different uh, lead forms, you could add another Facebook lead form here as well. So now that I have my trigger, which means that whenever a Facebook lead form is submitted, this sequence right here is going to uh, get activated. So here I'm just going to do inbound lead sequence as the title of the, of the sequence. You can name it however you want. Uh, the first step that I would do is I would assign the contact to myself since I am the, in this case, I am the appointment setter. So what you would do is you would click here on assign user. And again, this, you can just give it whatever name you want. So, and then for users, what you would do is you would select the user that you want the leads to be assigned to later on down the process, you could assign it to somebody else. In this case, I am doing everything myself. So I would just click myself, save to action. And then once I have assigned myself to this client, you may be wondering why is it that I am assigning the user to myself right now, if I'm the only one working in the agency, yes, that's true. But in the future, if there's more people, you want to make sure that each lead that comes in is assigned to somebody so that no leads, uh, slip through the cracks. The next step would be to notify myself that there's a new lead. There's different ways that you can do this. You can send an email notification to yourself. You can send a text notification to yourself, or if you have the high level app on your phone, you can also send yourself a notification 
so that it shows up on your screen. And in this case, I am gonna do a internal notification. So what I'll do is notification and then the title of the notification would be new lead. And then I would go ahead and select the name. So the way that high level works is they have this custom values right here. If you wanted to put the name of the person that just came in, in the, like when you're sending an email or in the title of a notification, like what I am doing right now, it'd be very hard because you don't know like what the, what the lead's name is. So what you can do is click here, select custom values, go to contact, and then you could do like full name. So essentially, whenever a new lead is created and it's assigned to me, I would get a notification that would say new lead, John Smith, like new lead, John Smith has clicked on, has submitted, has submitted their info on the ad. And then the redirect page just means that whenever I click that notification on my phone, like where do I want myself to be taken to? So in that case, I would want to be taken to the conversation and who am I sending this notification to? I would send it to the assigned user, which is in this case myself. I Like if there's more people working, I'm not gonna send it to anyone since I'm the one handling that client. So I would do assign the user to myself. So now I have assigned the user to myself. I have sent myself an internal notification and then here's where the fun part begins. In high level, you can send automated messages. So what I would do is like, I would send a first SMS, which would be, hi, for instance, John uh, Smith. So I would use this custom values again. And well, in this case, I would just use their first name. So hi, John, let me help book an appointment. And then I could also add a photo right here, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So then um, what would happen is, oh, and something that I forgot to mention is this first message right now, is it's being sent as soon as the contact is created and go high level, like there's no pause. That may be a bit too uh, immediate. So maybe what you would like to do to make it seem more genuine or more real is to add a wait period. And in this wait period, uh, you can set the, the wait time for however long you want. And there's also like even more uh, complicated waits. For right now, I just want to wait 10 minutes. And then of course, I only want to send the text if it's during working hours. So I would hit this advanced window and then I would set up the times where I want the message to be sent. So essentially what this means is that between the hours of 9 to 5 p.m., I would be sending them this message after 10 minutes. If the lead submits the information at midnight, I'm not going to send them a text message 10 minutes after they've clicked that. What I'll do is I'll have this wait period and then at 9, 10, so 9 plus the 10 minutes, it will send that initial text. Next, I would do a wait of one minute so that it doesn't seem like it's a bot texting them, but it's somebody actually just um, chatting with them. And then after the one minute wait, what I would do is send them another text message. It, when are you interested free consultation? Uh, SMS number two. Like again, the title is not that important. Um, this is just for like reference once these uh, sequences and or automations get more complex. You want to make sure that you know exactly what each step is doing. What I'll do right now is I'll add a wait, but this is just not, this is not just going to be a regular wait. What I'll do is I'll make it so that it's a uh, wait. It waits for the contact to reply. And then I would just say like, if they reply to either my first or my second message, and I would set up a timeout because I'm going to do if they don't reply to me in eight, uh, in uh, sorry, 10 hours, I want to follow up with them. So right now is wait 10 hours for a reply. Now, if they do reply, I want to create a scenario where if they do reply, something happens. And if they don't, 
I send the automatic follow-ups. And the way that I do that is I click here and then I do the if. Now here on this if, branches just mean the different um, yeah, branches that you will have. This I will just, for the condition name, I'll just do has be replied. And for this branch will be the yes. And in here is where I actually set up my condition. So if the contact reply, if contact has replied equals yes, then, um, so that will be my first branch. Okay, so now that I've created this right here, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So right now is has the contact, has the lead replied? Yes, then it goes through this side of the automation and otherwise it goes on this side. I could also have done a, like added another branch and say branch, uh, like if they don't reply and then just set up the parameters right here. But the thing is that by default, high level, like we'll create that none branch, which is in this case, since there's only two alternatives, either the lead replies or they don't reply, there's no need for me to create that branch for when they don't reply. If they do reply, I want to notify myself. So I'll send the internal notification. And I might want to do it over text. Then I might say like, contact John Smith has replied. So I'll do like uh, their full name. Please ASAP. So what this means is that when the client replies, oh, and of course I would have to like, who am I sending this text message to? I would send it to the assigned user in this case, which is, uh, I would send it to the assigned user, uh, which in this case is myself. Then I hit save and right now is, if they do reply, send the notification to myself and then the automation has finished. And in that case, I would go ahead and like start chatting with them manually. If they don't reply, I'll just show you how to schedule a call. So you see right here, there's a manual text message, like SMS and a SMS here as well. The difference is that this one will be automatic. So like if it gets to that step, for instance, in, in here, where after you wait one minute, this text right here will get sent automatically with manual. Uh, it gets added to your to-do list in a way. So then you would have to manually review and send a text message. What I might want to do is call them. So what I would do is set up a manual call. Again, manual just means it get it gets added to my to-do list. So I'll do manual call and then just um, add that to my to-do list. So now I've created my first automation uh, here. This is just a test. So that's why it's set up as draft. And then I would just hit save. So in summary, that's how you create an automation. Um, of course, there's a lot of more moving parts as to like, okay, how do you connect your Facebook to high level? And then how do you go over your manual calls? But as a first video, I thought this would be enough and would be like a good introduction to the power of Go High Level and how you can use it to follow up uh, in your client's behalf and just really make every, your life easier if you're trying to get results for your client.